Blackmagic Design announced the Streaming Decoder 4K a little bit more than six months ago, and I was finally able to get my hands on it, but before we start going over what this does and how you would use it, I have to rewind way back. You see, years ago, Blackmagic released their OG web presenter, and I want to clear up some confusion. That device was actually a captured device. It would take either SDI or HDMI and convert that video signal into a webcam signal that your computer could then see over a USB connection. It was pretty cool too because it had the ability to switch between the SDI and HDMI feed and you could even insert your own XLR audio so it was kind of like having a two camera switcher. Later, they released the web presenter again, but this time it had the ability to encode and instead of the 720p webcam signal of the original device, it now had 4K encoding in both H.264 and H.265 flavors. So for anyone who might have seen some of my really old videos, you probably saw the original web presenter and it was used for entirely different purposes. Today, we're talking about the device that would go at the other end of the signal chain, the Streaming Decoder 4K, which can receive a 4K video signal over the internet and decode it to a 12G SDI output, a 4K HDMI output, and even a USB webcam output all at the same time. So the streaming decoder can receive an encoded video signal from either one, the web presenter 4K, which has now been branded as the streaming encoder 4K, two, the Blackmagic ATEM switchers that have built-in encoders like the ATEM SDI Extreme ISO, which you'll see here in my video, or three, it can also receive an encoded signal from some of the Blackmagic cameras all over the internet. It's important to note here that being in the Blackmagic ecosystem, this device won't receive a signal from OBS or an outside encoder, but that's not really hindering us here in this setup. On the front, you'll find some menu buttons, an LCD screen to see the live signal along with audio levels, and you get USB access, which I think is a smart move if you have this device rack mounted because it can be a little bit tricky to access the USB port in the back once it's been placed inside of a rack. On the back of the device, there's AC power plus a 12 volt DC power for redundancy. It has both HDMI and SDI outputs, both in 4K. There's also a 12G SDI reference, so it can receive talkback, camera control, and tally information, which is then sent back to the streaming encoder. This streaming decoder works almost identically to the ATEM streaming bridge, with a few key differences. For starters, the streaming bridge only did 1080p, and this does 4K. The decoder has a USB webcam output, which the streaming bridge didn't have. And of course, it is rack mountable and has an LCD screen, so it's a different form factor. Let me show you how this all works, and then I'll talk about where we'd use this. Now this setup I'm showing you here is on my local network. I've essentially plugged in my ATEM, my computer, and my decoder all to the same switch, so they're on my home network. And what I love about this method is there's no need to create an XML file to connect the streaming decoder to my ATEM. The ATEM software control simply sees the decoder as an option when I go into the output menu and select a streaming destination. If you're setting up the streaming decoder in a different location, then you'll need to have a bit of working knowledge. I recommend that you start learning about port forwarding and setting up static IP addresses for your devices. A great resource that I found for getting started with networking is the Netgear Academy and their free AV certification, and you can find that over at academy.netgear.com. So I'm over here at my live streaming cart, and this is where I want to run you through just very quickly what this setup is and how everything is connected. So for starters, I've got an ATEM SDI Extreme ISO, which I'm bringing two camera feeds into. I've got one camera over here and then one camera right over here. And that's just allowing you to see all of this. Additionally, I'm bringing in my Mac on input two, and then I'm looping the multi-view back into this just for the sake of recording in case I wanted to show that to you. So that's what you're seeing over here on my multi-view. Two cameras, one computer, one multi-view 
looped back in. And then input number five, which is currently black at the moment, is going to be my streaming decoder. And this is mostly just so that you can see when I'm streaming out and the timing between when I hit go live or on air, and then when the decoder is actually receiving a signal. Now, as far as wiring goes, it's important to note that all of this is happening on my home network. So just below the top shelf of this cart, I have a Netgear switch, and this is connected to my home network. And that switch is connected to the ATEM over wired ethernet. The computer is on Wi-Fi, which is just putting it on the same exact network. And then the streaming decoder is also connected to that switch using Using wired ethernet. So everything is on the same network here. It's going to be slightly different if you are off-site and you have the streaming decoder plugged in elsewhere from the point of streaming. So for these purposes, this is for streaming over a local network. Once you've got yourself a streaming decoder and you've got everything connected, the first thing you want to do is head on over to Blackmagic's website and you wanna find the software to download. It's called the Blackmagic Streaming 4.0 update. And I didn't find it just through the search bar. All I did was I clicked on the streaming and encoding box right here. And a lot of people get fooled by this on the website. So if, if you load the page and you don't see it change, it's actually changing further down below. So you click on streaming and encoding, you scroll down just a little bit and you'll see this Blackmagic Streaming 4.0 update. At the time of recording this, the most recent download of this was on June 12th of 2025 so you might have to scroll through that list if any other updates have come out in that time span once you download and install this application you'll get that in your apps folder and it looks a little something like this let me hide my atem control panel all right, so this is the Blackmagic streaming setup software. And if your streaming decoder is discovered on the network, the same network that your computer is on, then it's going to be very quick and easy to find the device because it's just going to pop up right here. There's really not a whole lot that you have to do. You could go into the settings option right here. And if you're setting this up for streaming over the internet, you would click on internet and then you would of course have to update your port settings so that you can do port forward and get your signal when you're elsewhere. For me right now, I'm just doing the local network without a key since I don't really need to secure this. I'm just on a local home network. Additionally, you do have some audio settings. So in audio, if you have talkback and you wanna send that talkback signal back over that decoded signal, so back to the encoder side, then you can choose where your audio channels are that are being sent back. Uh, and then you've got some audio monitoring settings for the audio meters. Then under the setup option right here, uh, you can name your decoder, you can choose your language, you can check your software version, and of course, all of your network settings. So if you were setting a static IP address so that you're using this out in the field, this is where you're gonna set that static IP address. Now note that you can connect to the streaming decoder through a USB-C cable, or if you've got a computer that's on the same network. So there's two different ways that you can see that streaming decoder and get into these streaming settings. Down below that, I do recommend that for utility administration that you allow both USB and ethernet if that's not set up from the get-go and it's accidentally set to just USB. If you try to find this on the network, it's just not going to be found. So I recommend if you can connect with USB first and then change that setting over, it's just going to allow you more flexibility when you're setting your settings from there. Uh, you've got settings for reference timing, SDI output, and of course, if you needed to factory reset. But the most important option is right here, this stream source settings page. So this is the page where you can set up your streaming decoder to talk to, whether it's like your ATEM encoder, or if you're using one of the streaming encoders, this is how you're setting all that up. And what I really like here is that they actually have a little explanation of this. So for my purposes, I am streaming from an ATEM switcher. So I would choose ATEM switcher, and then it's going to change what it shows you here. It says, create a streaming link from an ATEM switcher switcher with streaming features to this streaming decoder over the local network. Now remember, I had set it to local network before. No preference file is required. Simply select the Blackmagic Streaming Decoder 4K in the platform menu in the live streaming palette. So this is important right here. I'm on a local network just for the purposes of this video. That means that the ATEM software control is going to automatically find my decoder as a destination, and I don't need to export any files at all. But if you were 
putting this decoder elsewhere on a different network, this is where you would choose your ATEM switcher or your streaming encoder, your web presenter, Blackmagic camera, whatever device is streaming to it. So let's say just streaming encoder, and then you would hit save settings file. You choose a location for that file. I'm just going to save it to my desktop. And this is the XML file that you would then import on the other side to tell the device where to stream to. So just keep in mind that that's how you would make that XML file if you were not on the local network. Since I'm streaming from an ATEM today, I'm just going to select ATEM switcher. I'm going to choose my quality. Now, quality is going to be based on how fast your internet connection is. I've got a great connection here. I'm getting somewhere in the neighborhood of like 300 up and down. So I could theoretically stream this at HyperDAC high, uh, but for today's purposes, I'm just going to do streaming high and leave it at that. Let's go ahead and hit save. Now that's all the settings that I need to set within the Blackmagic streaming setup software. Now we can hop over to our ATEM control software, which is very familiar, right? If you've got your ATEM plugged in and connected the way that I do, I have both the options for a USB-C cable coming out of this going directly to my laptop. That's how they're talking to each other. But this ATEM is also wired into my network with an ethernet cable, and it's the same network that this computer is on. So there are two different ways for your ATEM software control to find the ATEM on the network. Now that I've got this all plugged up and connected, I want to create this connection to the streaming decoder and start encoding out of the ATEM. So let's do it. We're in the ATEM software control. I'm going over to the output tab right here. And then I've got this live stream tab. Now, in order to determine what we are streaming to, you want to go into your platform. So it's the Blackmagic streaming decoder. It's actually already in there right now, which is perfect for me. And then all I should have to do is hit on air. All right, let's do this. You ready? Three, two, one, on air. All right, so I've started streaming. The decoder almost instantly started saying live, flashing live, and it knew that my signal was coming through. And now what you're seeing on my multi-view right now, so right here on the multi-view in the bottom left, this is the decoder's output. So you're gonna see the delay in me going into the ATEM, right? So camera one, which is my main camera that I'm streaming out right now, versus camera five, which is the decoder coming back into my ATEM. So now what I wanna do is prove to you what this delay looks like on a reasonable internet connection. So I've got my handy dandy iPad over here. And what I wanted to do was bring up a sync test so that we can show you our sync across the board. So let me get this guy full screen here. I'm gonna show this to the camera and through the magic of editing, what I will have my editor do is my editor can put on screen, maybe right over here, how much delay there is between the camera feed in input one, which is our live camera, versus the decoder feed, which is coming back into the ATEM. So you can see that full round trip from the ATEM encoding, sending it out to the streaming decoder, and the decoder is sending an SDI signal back into the ATEM. So just if you want to see right over here, I'm going to put it right about here. Using this sync test, you should see how much delay that we found from the ATEM encoding going out over the network and coming back into the streaming decoder. And once you're done streaming and you want to stop the stream that's going to your decoder, all you have to do is go back into the ATEM software control and we're going to hit off and you'll see almost instantly the decoder stops, the signal drops, and that's how quick it is for these two devices to talk to each other. Now, of course, out in the field, it'll be really important to make sure that you have a strong internet connection, and that's also going to dictate the speed at which you'll be able to stream, whether that's streaming low, medium, or high, depending on your internet connection. If you're thinking about the streaming decoder and wondering about a few different ways that you could use this, here's what I'm thinking. For starters, the streaming decoder is very similar to the ATEM streaming bridge. So if you find yourself needing a bridge, so to speak, well, Blackmagic has one to sell you. Just kidding. The bridge allows you to encode your signal out over a local network and then pick up the show on the other side. So this is great for larger buildings like universities or hospitals and even houses of worship where you just want 
want to pick up that signal in another location. Alternatively, this is great for getting a live stream back to a switcher or main control room. Imagine that you're out in the field and you have nothing but a Blackmagic camera and a data source, like maybe a hotspot or a wired internet connection. Simply stream from the Blackmagic camera and it'll arrive back at your streaming decoder where you can bring that signal into your show. News stations do this all the time when they're out in the field and they have a correspondent and they want to get that video signal back to the production. One more way that I think about this setup is for those that are doing a multi-location broadcast. I had a live stream once where we had a site in Colorado and another site in Virginia. If we had an ATEM in Colorado and the decoder in Virginia, we could send the show over to them at any point in time and then receive their feed back to us both for displaying in the room and for incorporating into the live stream. I'm sure you'll also come up with your own scenarios, so if you do, be sure to put them down below in the comments section. While I don't have the resources to show every method of streaming to the Streaming Decoder 4K, this should give you a good understanding of how it functions, how you can set one up for yourself, what the delay looks like, and whether or not this makes sense for your setup. If you want to grab one for yourself, I've got a link down to it below, and thanks again to Blackmagic Design for our continued partnership and sending this over to test out. See you next time.